In the last two modules, we have studied the problem of direct position kinematics for the four bar mechanism and the slider crank mechanism. In this module, we will study the direct position kinematics problem for the inverted slider crank mechanism. Recall that an inverted slider crank mechanism can be formed by linkage transformation from a four bar mechanism with all revolute joints. The transformation that has to be performed is to replace the revolute joint between link 3 and link 4 by a prismatic joint. Let A be the length of the link 2, B be the length of the link 3, C is the length of link 4, and D is the length of link 1. In the inverted slider crank mechanism, the axis along which the slider translates also rotates. The direct position kinematics problem for this mechanism is as follows. Given the link lengths A, C and D, which is the length of O2A, O4B and O2O4 and the input angle theta2, which is the angle made by the link O2A with the x-axis, compute the position of the slider B. So the variable B here changes as the mechanism moves because the slider slides on the link 3 and the angles theta 3 and theta 4. Both theta 3 and theta 4 changes as the mechanism moves. You should note that there is one difference in the problem statement of the inverted slider crank and the previous two problem statements that we have seen. The difference is that here we seem to have three unknown variables. And what you had seen before is you had two unknown variables and you obtained two equations for it. Although there seems to be three unknown variables here, all three of them are not independent. If you know B and either theta 3 or theta 4, you will know the other angle. In particular, gamma, which is the angle between link 3 and link 4, it is always constant. And theta 3 is theta 4 plus minus gamma. The picture shown here is for theta 3 equals to theta 4 plus gamma. But there can be other ways of assembling the mechanism where theta 3 would be theta 4 minus gamma. So in essence, there are two unknown variables. To see why gamma should be constant, you should note that there is one translational degree of freedom between links 3 and 4. Therefore, Although theta 3 and theta 4 may change, the angle between links 3 and 4 cannot change because there is only a translational degree of freedom. There is no rotational degree of freedom. To solve the direct position kinematics problem, we have to first assign a vector to each link. So let us assign O2A to link 2, BA to link 3, O2O4 to link 1, and O4B to link 4. This is shown on the right hand side here where O2A is R2, BA is R3, O2O4 is R1 and O4B is R4. The angle theta 2 is shown here, the angle theta 4 is shown here, theta 3 is this angle and theta 1 in this picture is 0. So I can write R2, R3, R4, R1 in the complex number form where A, B, C, D are the respective lengths and theta2, theta3, theta4, theta1 are the respective angles. Now we can see that O2A is equal to O2, O4 plus O4B plus BA or R2 equals to R1 plus R4 plus R3. Therefore, taking the vectors R1, R4, R3 to the left hand side, we have the vector loop closure equation as shown here. And we know each one of these Ri's 
in terms of the link lengths and the angles. So again, we have to pause for a moment and understand what are our variables and what are the unknowns that you have to solve for. Here A, C, D, theta 1 and the angle gamma are constants. The independent variable is theta 2. It means that theta 2 varies with time or as the mechanism moves, but we know the value of theta 2 for position analysis. And you have to find theta 3, theta 4 and B. And we have an extra equation of the form theta 3 equal to theta 4 plus minus gamma. In the picture shown here, theta 3 is theta 4 plus gamma. If we take the vector loop closure equation and substitute the complex number form for each one of the vectors, we get the equation shown here. Now we will proceed as before. We will use Euler's formula to expand each one of these complex exponentials. Now recall Euler's formula is e to the power of j theta equal to cos theta plus j sine theta. So from the first term, we get the term in the first parenthesis. The second term gives the term in the second parenthesis. The third term gives the term here. And the fourth term gives this term in the last parenthesis. From here, I can separate out the real part and the imaginary part and form two equations. Furthermore, I have theta 1 equal to 0. So theta 1 equal to 0 will imply that sine theta 1 is 0 and cos theta 1 equal to 1. So if I do this substitution for theta 1 equal to 0 and do the separation, these are the two equations that I am getting. Only cos theta 1 becomes 1, so d cos theta 1 becomes d here. d sin theta 1 doesn't show up because sin theta 1 is 0. Again, look at these two equations and try to see what are the unknowns that we have to solve for. Theta 3 is an unknown theta 4 is an unknown and b is an unknown. However, we have the equation theta 3 equal to theta 4 plus gamma which we have to use. Here I have just transferred the two equations that we obtained in the previous slide. Furthermore, as I stated before, we have theta 3 equals to theta 4 plus gamma. Our goal is to eliminate one of the variables from these two equations. We will first try to eliminate b. So from the second equation, we can just solve for b. b will be a sine theta 2 minus c sine theta 4 by sine theta 3. Then I substitute b in the first equation. So this equation is obtained by substituting b in the equation 1 here. Now if we substitute theta 3 equal to theta 4 plus gamma and simplify we will get an equation in theta 4 of the following form p sine theta 4 plus q cos theta 4 plus r equal to 0 where p q r are constants which are given by these formulas we will see shortly in the next slide how we obtain this expression for p q and r however for now convince yourself that p q r are constants it is true because we know a we know theta 2, we know d, and we know gamma. They are all constants. Similarly, we know c. So p, q, r are constants. Now recall that this is of the form of problem 1 in the supplementary notes or in the slides that we have studied before. So we know how to solve this problem. We can directly solve this problem for theta 4. Once we have obtained theta 4, we can obtain theta 3 from this formula. Once we have obtained theta 3 and theta 4, we substitute here and we get b. There will be two solutions for theta 4, hence there will be two solutions for theta 3, hence there will be two solutions for b. Now we will go into the details of filling in the missing steps of going from here to this trigonometric equation. So this line just reproduces the equation from the previous slide. Now multiply by sine theta 3 throughout. So the first term here becomes this red term a cos theta to sine theta 3 and the last term here becomes this red term minus d sine theta 3. 
a sin theta 2 minus c sin theta 4 it doesn't change so this is the term in the parenthesis and it's multiplied by cos theta 3 here so you've just taken it down here and c cos theta 4 gets multiplied by sin theta 3 which becomes the term here now look at the two red terms there are some constants multiplying sin theta 3 so collect the constants which will be a cos theta 2 minus d the term a sin theta 2 times cos theta 3 comes down here and the blue terms can be written together in this form now sin theta 3 cos theta 4 minus sin theta 4 cos theta 3 is sine of theta 3 minus theta 4 and theta 3 minus theta 4 is gamma so the blue term can be written as minus c sine gamma in the other two terms i substitute theta 3 equal to theta 4 plus gamma so from here i get sine theta 3 equal to sine theta 4 plus gamma and from here in place of cos theta 3 i have cos theta 4 plus gamma now i have to expand this sine and cosine terms and that's what i have done here sine theta 4 plus gamma is this term within the parenthesis cos theta 4 plus gamma is this term within the parenthesis then I collect coefficients of sine theta 4 and cos theta 4. So this is the sine theta 4 term here and a sine theta 4 term here. A cos theta 2 minus D times cos gamma is the first coefficient that comes from this term. From this term, the coefficient is minus A sine theta 2 times sine gamma. And there's a minus here, so it becomes plus. So plus A sine theta 2 plus sine gamma. Similarly, from these two terms, I collect the coefficients of cos theta 4 and it comes out to be this term here and C sin gamma just comes down here. And now you can see that this is what I had called P, this is what I called Q and this is what I called R. P, Q, R are constants and the only variable here is theta 4. So I can solve for theta 4 from this equation.